general settings general settings okay we've got here um, barometric correction which is uh, the the ECUs MS ECUs have a built-in MASF a manifold air pressure sensor and when you switch the power on to the ECU you can allow the barometric pressure the actual uh, standard um, day pressure to be read by the ECU so it can correct for it um, so you do that by having it on initial map reading so basically when you turn the power on to the ECU the engine should be uh, stopped so the pressure in the manifold air pressure is, is standard atmospheric pressure so it will read that in and use that as its correction factor for uh, barometric pressure but if the uh, engine's running when, uh, and the ECU resets for some reason or other or you turn the power off and on again goodness knows why you would but if you did then um, if it's say idling you may have a um, if your manifold air pressure sensor is connected to the plenum you may have a manifold air pressure of 40 50 kPa so then start correcting for that which would throw you feel note completely so we have an upper and a lower limit so um, just set that your upper limit just slightly above what you generally see so if you're not sure put 105 110 in here but I mean our pressure where I live never goes above 101 and never seems to go below 99 so um, I've put them the, li the limits just above and below those values you can also have two independent sensors, so you can have a built-in barometric correction, so it constantly corrects for barometric pressure, rather than just when the power's on. That's handy if you're climbing mountains and things like that. Um, but that would then be on an input of J. I tend to wire mine in JS5 or JS4 on the ECU. So if you had two independent sensors. That'd be, you'd, I'd wire the independent, the actual barometric correction sensor into uh, uh, JS4 or JS5. But we're going to put that back to initial because I've only got one map sensor on mine, or most of them have. And the map sensor type is always voltage. Okay, um, lag vac factors. Um, just make sure you keep all these off if you turn them on and just keep them as they are. Map, uh, the lag factors. The ECU can be, um, scans the imp all the inputs, all its sensors uh, quite frequently. You can change how often it scans them. So the lower the number, the more often it scans them. The higher the number, the less often it scans them. Uh, this is quite handy if you want to smooth out some values if you're getting erratic values of like my lambda sensor one i've got two lambda sensors one of them works lovely and the other one's very sort of spiky and just isn't very smooth so i've increased the lag factor to 75 to to so as i get a less frequent reading from it still a lot of readings but uh, it's a little less frequent standard values in here would be 50 but you've got naught to 100 um my uh, up, my throttle position lag factor I've dropped to 20 because I like the throttle position to be looked at very regularly I've got a nice smooth throttle sensor don't have any problems with it whatsoever so um, I like the lag factor but just that means that I, I, I feel that that means that the um, acceleration enrichment seems to trigger a little bit nicer auto zero on the throttle position um, just when you power up, that will automatically take in the value that it sees as the um, as zero. I'll leave that off. Primary fuel load. This is like exactly the same as we said earlier on the engine um, control algorithm. So this is for fuel. So um, you can have speed density if you want to use mass airflow, the manifold air pressure sensor, sorry, um, or if you want to use throttle position as your um, fuel load, you have alpha N. Basically, what that means is if I go in here, this is a fuel table. 
the fuel load is up and down here and as you can see the fuel load goes up and down with the throttle position on that one that if it was in throttle position that'd be naught here all the way up to 100 so you'd have naught two three eight something like that, you know all the way up to 100 so but this is a map uh, um, uh, a speed density which is manifold air pressure table but i can't show you that going up and down on the stimulator otherwise um, i would so if this was that's just to show you the load going up and down using the throttle position on the map so that's what this changes secondary fuel load always have that disabled unless you really know what you're doing always have multiply map as multiplying basically that's just to add fuel uh, if you go into boost so um or if you as you decelerate de as, as the vacuum increases in the manifold pre uh, airflow meter sorry as the vacuum increases within the th plenum uh, that will take fuel out and uh, as pressure increases that will add fuel in automatically so it just controls the fuel a little bit better if you have it on multiply incorporate or don't incorporate um, include sorry AFR targets you can get make it so as you can have the fueling automatically um, follows no it doesn't follow it looks at the AFR table so if you if you've got your fuel table perfect and your and f so it follows your AFR table perfectly if you had include AFR targets when you tuned it if you all you've got to do is change your AFR target so if you were say for instance cruising at 14.7 um, AFR and um, and the V table was perfect for that and the AFR target was 14.7 and you decide you want to go at 15.2 for instance all you'd have to do is it change your AFR table so say for instance here you had 14.7 and it worked and you had that everything was tuned hunky dorily um, if you change that to 15 or 15.2 the the fuel would automatically correct for that uh, the fuel table would automatically correct so the fuel the pulse would would to the injectors would decrease um, that's all very well as long as everything's perfect so <laughs> I, n nothing's ever seems to be perfect so I always leave that as don't include AFR target and that way you just if you want to change the AFR you have to just change the fuel table um, you just have to manually change the fuel table Prime ignition load, this is the same as we were discussing earlier about speed density and alpha N, but this is for the ignition, so you can have fuel under speed density if you wanted, and, and ignition under alpha N, so it full, so the fuel in control, the mass air, the manifold air pressure sensor, and the ignition follow the throttle position if you wanted to. Complicated tune it, but you could do that if you wanted to. So um, I always generally put these two the same, just make sure they're the same. Uh, speed density is for tuning with a if you had a boosted engine like I've got you'd need to run speed density so the the fueling map corrects and can go up to in, into boost if you run on throttle position you never show when you're in boost because the ECU hasn't got a clue so um, so you are always better off run speed density on a uh, on a boosted engine unless you really know what you're doing there are a few tuners who like to tune in alpha n and have the manifold air pressure sensor connected uh, to correct the fueling for pre uh, for pressure for boost and still follow the throttle position sensor you can do it if you really know what you're doing but I would stick with speed density if you're boosted and alpha n if you've got independent throttle bodies or you're never going to go boosted and you've got a th you've got a throttle position sensor for alpha n I'm going to leave it on alpha end just to show you what how to do a little bit of tuning because it's, it's easier. Secondary ignition load disabled, same as that. Just leave the dis the secondary loads as disabled. AFR target, uh, AFR table and, and enhanced acceleration enrichment loads. Um, you leave them as using the controller algorithm, so it'll, it'll use the um, whatever you set up here so you could have it so as your throttle position for AFR target um, speed density for fuel and whatever you wanted for 
ignition but just leave them set them to the same set these as leave these as use primary load you won't go far wrong overrun fuel cut turn that off while you're tuning um, once you're happy with the tune and you've got everything really how you want it then you can start playing with this um, basically this is when it start when it cuts fuel out on overrun so if you if you're accelerated and you hit say 5000 rpm you just take your foot off the accelerator you go into overrun the engine it draws a lot of vacuum and um, it's not under any load and to be honest with you you don't need any fuel going in so you can cut the fuel off so that's what overrun fuel cut is so it turns fuel off so on mine if anything if i decelerate and above 2000 rpm so if i if i hit 5000 take the foot off the throttle throttle position sensor goes below 0.2 i'd get a massive vacuum pulled in my manifold air pressure sensor so about 15 18 kpa i'd go down to so below 28 i've set mine at 28 and as long as your rpm's above 2000 that'll take the after two seconds that'll cut the fuel off um be careful here that this doesn't this value here isn't too close to where you uh, cruise at because if you're cruising at say 30 kpa then you don't need a little, few little spikes or a little bit of a backing off the throttle and you'll soon soon be under 28 kpa and you'll cut fuel and you'll be thinking that'll be still coughing you know on off on off and um so what i'd suggest you is look at data logs Date log, look at wh where you cruise, what, what sort of KPA you pull when you cruise. Mine's about 40, 35, 40. And look at the KPA you pull when you're decelerating. Mine's about 18, something like that. Um, so this could really be uh, about 22, 23, something like that. So is that still trigger? Um, so be careful how you set this up. And then the, the fuel comes back on again after, when it gets to 1800 RPM generally you probably want this about 1600 rpm so anything less than 1600 rpm that cuts fuel and come back on about 14 1300 rpm but i like to hear mine coughing farting out the exhaust so i like the fuel to be on